catastrophic fire at Notre Dame Cathedral. The world watching in horror as the inferno tore through one of the most famous cathedrals in the world. The spire engulfed in flames, then collapsing on live television. The race at this hour to save what's left. And now the evacuation tonight. The mayor a short time ago on fears of another collapse. Crowds of people in the streets in tears and in disbelief. Our team on the scene tonight. Meantime, President Trump's message on Paris tonight and his tweet seen by the world that firefighters should use flying water tankers, telling them, quote, must act quickly. Tonight, authorities on that suggestion. In this country tonight, the severe weather slamming the east, the lightning striking one world trade and the deadly tornadoes. At least 30 twisters confirmed, at least eight dead. The boy thrown from that third floor balcony at the Mall of America tonight. News on the boy. And the suspect, police say at the mall the day before, quote, looking for someone to kill. Actress Lori Loughlin and her husband tonight pleading not guilty. The teenager under arrest tonight, his alleged plan for his high school after what he's accused of doing to his grandparents. The college senior falling to her death and now reports she made a Snapchat video right before. And Tiger Woods and his comeback. That emotional embrace with his children. And now we learn the man who made 1.2 million because of his bet right before the Masters. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here to start another week. But we do begin this week with those devastating images, the heartbreak from Paris tonight. Notre Dame Cathedral going up in flames. The first call shortly before 1 p.m. Eastern today, 6.50 p.m. Paris time. That fire surrounding the spire, the fire then advancing unstoppable, a creeping across that roof then engulfing the spire, and as millions from around the world were watching, that iconic spire then collapsing on live TV. Fears growing more of that cathedral could come down. Crowds gathering in the streets below, watching the heart of Paris burn. A short time ago, the mayor of Paris on the new evacuations tonight feared there could be another collapse. The mayor revealing they now have drones inside the cathedral, monitoring the fire, and what they see is, quote, terrible. ABC's David Wright is on the scene in Paris tonight. Tonight, an icon of Paris, the very heart of the city, in flames. The whole world watching in disbelief. The spire of the 850-year-old Notre Dame Cathedral collapsed, caving in the roof, engulfing this historic landmark in flames. American John Dickus in Paris watched from the balcony in shock while on the air with David this afternoon. There's no question that was the, the most horrifying moment. Uh, my, my partner and I were, were standing on the balcony watching. That was the, the moment that she started crying when we, we watched that spire fall down. It, it's just, you know, it's such an, like an iconic part of, of the Paris skyline. It the first reports surfaced at 6.50 p.m. Paris time, an ominous image of smoke billowing from Notre Dame. There's a fire in the background. Oh, no. Then, to the horror of onlookers, the first flames burst through the ceiling. The inferno quickly out of control. The cause unknown, but it engulfed scaffolding from a $6 million renovation project. Authorities are investigating whether a construction worker may have accidentally sparked the blaze. Crowds of onlookers transfixed. This building has withstood revolutions and two world wars. The history of France written in stone. Tonight, a stunned silence. Many are in tears. 400 firefighters rush to the scene surrounding the cathedral, but at times powerless against the raging inferno. We can see now the hoses and some of the spray on that fire, but uh, it certainly just seems to be overwhelming the authorities there on the ground. Yeah, there's, there's no question. I'll tell you, the, for me, the most heartbreaking moment was when I saw about 20 minutes about 20 minutes after I, I started watching the fire i saw the the ladders go up and, and the hoses start spraying and it, it was just it was just heartbreaking to watch they the ladders were not tall enough the the hoses were not strong enough as the fire ferociously spread authorities scrambled to try and rescue priceless art and catholic relics from the 850 year old landmark Tonight, the mayor said the process is partially successful. Notre Dame, the most visited location in all of France, 30 million tourists a year, 
French President Emmanuel Macron said the fire took part of everyone in France with it, adding, Our Lady of Paris is in flames. It's quite striking here to see all the Parisians that come here to gather to mourn. I don't know what to say. For me, it's the most beautiful monument for Paris, better than Eiffel Tower. Tonight, as darkness fell and the fire continues to rage, the roof and the spire are destroyed, and the race is on for authorities to save what they can. So let's get the latest on that effort. David Wright joins us live from Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. And David, I know the mayor revealing a short time ago that they do believe that they've been able to save key parts of this cathedral. That's right, David. Uh, French authorities believe that they have managed to save those two iconic towers. No word yet on the stained glass. You can see the building there behind me in darkness now. But as from where I'm standing, you can see fire crews continue to pour water on it. The mood here in Paris is one of great sadness, but also resolve. The French president saying tonight, we will rebuild. David. David, thank you. The images of that spire coming down left us all with few words today. And there was an American student studying in Paris, Kelly Weymouth. She's from Washington, D.C. Her mother is visiting from home, and they were on a sunset cruise on the Seine, the famous river that runs along the cathedral, when they saw the cathedral burning. And here's what they told me. Right. We're watching your piece of video right now, and I... I don't even know how you were able to hold the phone, actually, while you were watching that uh, through through the lens of the phone, Kelly. I, I'm sorry you had to witness that. And, and just tell us what, what you've seen, what you're seeing now. So me and my mom, we're going on a sunset cruise on the Seine. And when I got on the boat, one of my friends texted me saying, Notre Dame is on fire. And we couldn't see it at that point. But we were kind of shaken up. And then our boat started going down the river. And you could see the smoke just raising up. And then eventually we got next to it, and you can just see the flames going up. And eventually the tower came down. It was just very, very crazy. It must be a chilling thing to witness, obviously, with your mother. And how many other people were on uh, that sunset cruise? We know that it's such a popular thing to do there on the Seine in Paris. There were like 40 of us, maybe. And it was just kind of crazy because there was people from all different countries. And then eventually there were some French people on there, and they just started sobbing. and holding each other and it was just very very intense <laughs> well kelly please uh send our best to your mother as well and um and to the folks who were on that cruise um will be forever changed yeah. by what they witnessed this afternoon kelly thank you and and thank you for sharing your images thank though. you and there was that american professor in paris john dickus who watched from his balcony while we were on the air describe for us the moment you saw the spire perhaps uh, one of the most um iconic parts of that cathedral it really define the, the look of that cathedral for so many people who come to visit it the stained glass windows and but of course that spire that we have watched tumble uh, there's there's no question that was the the most horrifying moment uh, my my partner and I were were standing on the balcony watching that was the the moment that she started crying when we we watched that spire fall down it, it's just you know it's such an like like an, an iconic part of, of the Paris skyline I mean in, in terms of just the the devast the confusion and, and the sense of shock that people are feeling um, it, it's it's awful to, to see uh, and, and the streets in front of my house right now are, are just choked with people the the emergency trucks seem to be having a hard time getting through um, people are, are just sort of paralyzed and, and transfixed watching uh, this this beautiful iconic building uh, collapsing in front of them Witnesses on the air with us today as the world, in fact, watched. And among them, President Trump was uh, shaken by the sight of Notre Dame as it burned, tweeting it was horrible to watch. At an event in Minnesota calling it one of the great treasures of the world, the president also offering advice in a tweet saying firefighters should use flying water tankers, adding they must, quote, act quickly. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. As the world watched Notre Dame burn, a somber President Trump took note of the tragedy. The fire that they're having at the Notre Dame Cathedral uh, is something like few people have witnessed. It's one of the uh, great treasures of the world, and it's burning very badly. It looks like it's burning to the ground. Earlier in a tweet, the President offered some unsolicited advice. Perhaps flying water tankers could be used to put it out, must act quickly. Would that work? A veteran American firefighter told David it would not. Water is very heavy, and if it hits a structure like that out of a tanker, it could cause further collapse. Later, the French Civil Defense Agency said essentially the same thing. In its one and only tweet of the day in English, 
All means are being used except for water bombing aircrafts, which, if used, could lead to the collapse of the entire structure of the cathedral. And John Carl joins us now live from the White House. And John, in addition to watching what was unfolding in Paris, the president also aware of the other major headline here at home that there is news on the Mueller report. Uh, you're learning that Attorney General Bill Barr will release the redacted report on Thursday. Has the White House been briefed on this? Uh, the White House has been briefed, but only in the broadest of brushstrokes, the logistics and timing of the report. The White House has not asked Robert Mueller uh, to see a copy of the report. And more importantly, David, the White House has not asked to have anything redacted by invoking executive privilege. John David. Carl will be watching this all week long. John, thank you. In the meantime, we're going to turn to the deadly weather in this country tonight. At least eight people killed, including three children. Lightning striking One World Trade Center here in New York City. Runners in the Boston Marathon today forced to wait out dangerous storms there. An EF3 tornado hitting Franklin, Texas. Winds of 140 miles an hour. There have been at least 30 confirmed tornadoes from Texas to Ohio. The latest just today in Delaware. ABC's Marcus Moore tonight is in Cherokee County, Texas, where two tornadoes struck one town. Tonight, new destruction in the east from that severe weather outbreak. A tornado damaging a dozen buildings in Laurel, Delaware. From the air, you can see the destruction. Torrential storms threatening to delay the start of the Boston Marathon. Runners forced to huddle in shelters. This after 30 tornadoes tore through seven states. Yeah, there it is. It's hitting Shelby right now. This twister leaving a 17-mile path of destruction through Shelby, Ohio Sunday. Six people were hurt. Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's coming this way. In Alto, Texas on Sunday, an EF2 followed by an EF3 an hour apart, leveling parts of the town. There were three people here when this happened. They managed to escape unhurt by crawling out of the front door there, and they are thankful to be alive. We're still getting reports of tornadoes on the ground. The town of Franklin, Texas, taking a direct hit from an EF3 tornado with 140 mile per hour winds. I've seen tornadoes, but nothing like this. And tragedy in Angelina County, Texas. Three year old Jace Creel and his brother Dylan were killed when a tree crushed the car they were in. Their parents survived. And David, back here in Cherokee County, you can see they are in the process of trying to clean all of this up, but the break in the clouds will not last long. More severe weather is expected to hit this area on Wednesday. David. Marcus Moore tonight. Marcus, thank you. We do have news tonight on the little boy thrown from a third floor balcony at the Mall of America by a stranger. As that boy fights for his life, the man accused is now charged with attempted first degree murder. Tonight, what he told police about his visit to that same mall the day before, what he intended to do. Here's ABC's Alex Perez. Tonight, new details about 24-year-old Emmanuel Aranda, the suspect that police say cold-heartedly grabbed a five-year-old boy and threw him nearly 40 feet from a third-floor balcony at the Mall of America. According to court documents, Aranda telling investigators he had cased them all the day before and he intended to kill someone, an adult, but chose the boy instead, adding he was aware it was wrong. The horrifying scene unfolding Friday. We could see the EMTs over the little child and all we could see are these little feet. The suspect's motivation, police say, he was angry because he had been rejected by women he approached at the mall. Aranda, who's facing first-degree attempted murder charges, had been banned from the mall in the past for throwing water in a woman's face and destroying property. His family says he has mental health issues. What happened to the baby is so unfortunate, but it's going to bring light to a mental illness. David, that five-year-old boy, his name is Landon. His injuries are life-threatening. Loved ones say he has many surgeries ahead of him. That suspect is due in court tomorrow. David? Alex Perez again tonight. Alex, thank you. And in Louisiana tonight, the suspect in a string of arson fires at African-American churches has now been charged with hate crimes as well. Three black churches were destroyed by fire in 10 days in St. Landry Parish. Holden Matthews, the son of a local sheriff's deputy, pleaded not guilty to arson and to the new hate crime charges today. He's being held without bond. Actress Lori Loughlin has pleaded not guilty tonight in that college admission scandal. Last week, Loughlin and her husband were charged with an additional charge of conspiracy to commit money laundering on top of a mail fraud conspiracy charge. They are accused of paying half a million dollars in bribes to get their daughters admitted to USC. Actress Felicity Huffman took a much different path last week, apologizing publicly and pleading guilty 
to a single charge. Now to Tiger Woods tonight and one of the great comebacks in sports history, his win at the Masters Tournament, a triumph over scandal and injury, hugging his children. President Trump so impressed by his comeback, he announced he will present him with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And tonight we've learned of the one man who made $1.2 million on a bet he made right before the Masters. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. This is what redemption looks like. The return to glory. That signature fist pump and mega...